Well, I have about 15 minutes to talk about what I wrote in the book of over 600 pages. Uh, if I may sound like pre, uh, presumptuously conclusive on the stage today, it's because I really don't have time to explain everything in detail. And for that, you might need to get a copy of the book and read all 600 pages of it. Look at what I did there. Well, anyway, it's, it's not about selling the book. Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's the publishing a conviction. After having worked on or even obsessed with an idea of a certain field uh, for many years, um, thinking over it, reflecting upon it, studying, research, sometimes even meditating over it, it, it kind of grew on you. Uh, the overall subject I'm trying to cover in the book is the concern of uh, the uh, humanity in general, but in particular, the digital humanity. Um, it's a large topic. In my view, our human society is, I view it as an information system. Uh, in particular, it's a, uh, I call it digital humanity. Um, this story about information, and we get into that, we realize we even the, the universe itself is an information system. And from a physics point of view, we know the universe is um, simply energy and information, and everything else is really derived from energy and information, including all the material, you know, elemental particles, substance, molecules, uh, even uh, shapes, uh, all that, colors, all that, is really derivative. But fundamentally, the universe is energy and information. But the story of information, even the part that is closely related to man, mankind, did not really start with man. I think that man is really an expression of knowledge. Uh, divine knowledge, it's a, a special kind of information. Um, but we, the story that in the beginning man had an idea, uh, then he invented a tool to express that idea, that the, the tool is language. In the beginning it was the spoken language, but then the written language. I, I think easily the written language is easily the most important invention uh, mankind has ever made. Because it's a kind of transformation. It transforms an idea, a thought, that is intangible, abstract, intellectual, mental, maybe even spiritual. But then that's transformed into something in written language. It's tangible, physical. It carries on, uh, can, um, uh, through the dimension of time, then not only uh, contemporaries can share, but people in the future can actually look at that. that that's a huge transformation. So it's, it's, it, the first step, it, it went from the intangible to the tangible, but then came the digital. And in a way, you see the digital um, uh, revolution really is bringing that thing backward. Um, not in the two-dimensional circle. In a two-dimensional circle, you take one step and then it, you, you turn around and go into the original point. But this is like upward spiral. And we went from the regular written information and we went into uh, digital. Uh, that thing is again um, intangible. It's abstract. If you look at the computer, uh, what computer reads is all zeros and ones and everything is abstract. Now, but as I said, it's, it's upward spiral. It didn't go back to the original intangible. It's, 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 it's going like this and then at a different height, and maybe higher complexity, um, maybe even more meaningful. But mostly, we all understand, the, uh, we enjoy the benefit of uh, digitality, the, the thing that's, that's very easy to be, um, to be expressed. Uh, then we have 
In this process, maybe during the last 50 years, we have all witnessed the emergence of the digital humanity. So we going into this, we, um, in the last decade, more and more people start to realize that all the benefit we have received, we probably didn't get it for free. There's a cost to that. So I point out two different things that really are uh, the troubles of the digital humanity. And one is that it's, it's a detachment from reality. I don't get, one, that's, a lot can be talked on that, but I don't have time to get into that. But the second one is the centralization of control. Now both of these things, the detachment from the reality and the central, centralization of control has created a system now that we live in data, live with, with data. The data has lost both reliability and legitimacy. It's gradually losing more of that. Um, this is not to deny all the benefits we have already received from the digital uh, re uh, revolution, but it, it's, it's going to a stage that if we look forward, it's, we expect that there must be a next step that bring this whole system to a different level. And logically, we think that because the first step went from the digital, uh, the, from the concrete, uh, the, 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 uh, the intangible to the, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, tangible, and then went from the intangible. And we naturally expect the next step would be uh, with the digitality, we might add physicality to data. That's a logic expectation. So we add this turning point that merge of digitality and physicality is the hope that we can solve the next big problem. The, the technology that, that, that has been prepared that most people don't realize we already have the technology. The technology was developed 15 years ago uh, by Dr. Craig Wright as Satoshi Nakamoto and the adoption went astray. It's, it's when, you, when, you, when, you, when you witness the last 14, 15 years, all the development of crypto, um, it is really a reaction, not an action. The blockchain was an action that you have a reaction from the world, which in my view is not no, all negative because it's a process to expose the problem for the existing world. And I think we have seen enough of that problem. And this enforces our view to go back to the original technology that was invented 15 years ago, and then we try to solve this problem. Now, the merger of physicality and digitality is really, I think, is the most profound techno technological and business transformation in today's world. And on the one hand, you see that, that the, the, the Internet of Things and AR and VR, these things are basically a move to bring digitality to physical things. But at the same time, we understand the blockchain is a move to bring physicality to digital things. But I'm not emphasizing this, the symmetry between the two, because when you really think about it, the bringing physicality to digitality is a much harder thing to do. So. In a way, blockchain is more profound than IoT and other AI and VI, because other things can eventually be added onto this. We're experiencing this profound transformation. So let's look at this with a, um, a, a close up. And what, what, is, what is digitality and physicality? And we, we, we glance this name, we see bit and coin. Now let's look at digitality. This is something that we're all familiar with. Digital convenience. It has instant transmission, remote access, programmability, and traceability, all of this. And in Bitcoin, we see bit is the digital part of that that gives the system a digitality. But then we look for the physicality. What is physicality? Using cash as an example, we see physical cash-like instant settlement. That's physicality. And we all experience the convenience of that. When I give you $10 to you, hand it over to you, you have certain guarantee that I no longer have that $10. That's, that's an indication of physicality. 
So the coin part really is the physical part that gives the system physicality. So now with this background, we look at, really think about fundamentally, what is the essence of blockchain? Blockchain is a machine that transforms or converts a generic digital thing or digitalness into something that is more. I call it digital. It's, 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 a, it's a combination of physical and digital. You have a thing that's, that's new. It, it retains the digital convenience, but at the same time, it gains a characteristic of physical things. That's what blockchain is, is, is able to do. And with that capability, blockchain essentially can uh, have this one uh, prominent feature, is a blockchain can move the control of a set of bytes from A to B with a variable guarantee that the control has not been retained nor duplicated or at any time has never been given to a third party, the control is in the third party's hand. Now this fundamental thing that was, was accomplished, was able to achieve on blockchain is fundamental. It may sound simple, but it's going to change a lot of things. It has broader implications. So the world which we live in today is, you, 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 in general, you think about this world we live in today can be fully described by following basic uh, elements. I call it elements. Is number one time, then there's identities of a lot of things, and then there's relations, then states, conditions, events, and values. Now these things, we can use our language or whatever tools to describe them, but then we consider them in the context of tokenization. Now this word tokenization is during the last five years and has got this reputation that almost as somebody is doing a magic uh, called tokenization on blockchain. Um, uh, NFT get this name. When you, whenever you hear tokenization, you think of NFT, NFT as, as a name that's stolen for, uh, from its original purpose. But really, the um, um, tokenization is not a new thing. When we express a concept in your mind using language, we are already doing tokenization. The thing that's new on blockchain is all these things I talked about can be tokenized and they, the blockchain would give these things physicality. That's what is, what is revolutionizing everything. It's not the tokenization itself, it's the tokens now gain the physicality, I call it the, the digital things, and it has both a dual uh, property. Now see, this merge of physical digit, uh, digitality and on the blockchain becomes a broad basis for broad transformations. I listed here many, many things. I don't want to go um, uh, uh, over every one of them yeah, because time is running out. Um, many things. But overall, this, this is the kind of a structure we look at. And we look at the future internet with, uh, you know, abstract three layers. Um, on the base layer, you, we have authorization layer. The authorization layer is the human layer. That is, that is essentially, whether it's global or local, the government or non-government, law and regulations or business relations, it's the human relationship that has authorization. Now authorization gets on um, uh, the, the stage preparation and it gets on the internet, and now we in the middle, we have this layer, I call it authentic, authentication layer. The authentication layer on blockchain, we see on the top, we see the data, and data now is in abstract. It doesn't matter how data is stored or, or accessed. You can do it in the traditional way. But now data on the new internet, now it works with both TCP IP, IPv6, and blockchain. Now TCP IP gives the connectivity to data. Blockchain gives all that different kind of relationship, physicality to data. Now the data now the, on, on the internet, once blockchain and TCP IP is integrated, the data gains a new property. And on top of that, we have application layer. Now the, the new applications on this new internet is going to enjoy a lot of new properties that the traditional apps do not have. This, I call it a triple A uh, architecture. This is the future internet we're expecting. Now once we have that, we will have 
the universal single source of truth. And we have P2P and true P2P, IP to IP, based on IPv6. And identities will, help, uh, will be managed by self-sovereign identity. All this is going to constitute a true Web3. That's our hope. Now, all this requires a blockchain that is powerful enough to become, you know, uh, to offer unification on the base layer of the blockchain. Now, whenever you talk about unification, people get anxiety. Oh, unification, you're, you're again talking about central control. But that is, we emphasize the point that the technological unification is not a contradiction to decentralization. It is really a basis to provide true variety on top of it. You think of our universe we live today. The basic physics law is all unified. It's just because of that unification, it offers the capability for the application layer to be unlimited in a variety. And we expect that there will be, um, our new, new internet will really have that unification and based on a really capable blockchain. Of course, the blockchain will have to have these features. They need to be able to be unified on the TCP IP, and then you have unbounded scalability and allow a variety of L2 extensions. And of course, very, very low cost. That's the kind of hope we have. And, and it's, 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 it's my belief the hope is in a genuine um, blockchain, uh, 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 the Bitcoin blockchain, which is Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, BSV. Thank you. BSV is more than another chaotic commodity craze. BSV blockchain can do more than just be a crypto investment. It can help you get more out of your games, share more of your art, BSV makes more things possible.